Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel MBD Notes. In today's video, we are working on defects detection in PCB circuits using YOLO V5. So this video is a response to this comment. Without wasting your time, let's do it. First of all, let's open Jupyter Notebook. Here we go. First of all, we need a data set to perform training. So as you can see here that I got a kaggle.com dataset URL. You can visit this link and here you will get a dataset related to PCB defects. So this is a complete dataset of different types of defects. I have already downloaded this dataset as you can see here. You can also download this dataset from here. I will also upload this notebook in my GitHub repo and share the URL with you. You can find this in the description. So when we have downloaded this data set, we need to extract it over here. So let's do that. So we got our data set extracted over here. I don't need this zip file anymore. So let's delete this. So let's open this folder. And as you can see here, there are four folders and one file. So this Python file we don't need. This rotation folder is also not required. These three folders are required for training and testing purpose. So what's inside these folder? Let's see that. This is the image folder in which we got images of six categories of PCB defects, as you can see here. So let's see our annotations. We got our annotations, but as you can see here, that these files are XML files actually, but we need text files to train YOLO V5 model on this data set. So we need to convert these XML annotations into text file as the format we need like this one. So how would we convert these XML files into text files according to YOLO format? For that purpose, we got a package as you can see here that this is a XML to text package. We need to install this and then run this command to convert our XML annotations to text annotations according to YOLO v5 format. So let's open this GitHub package. So in this GitHub repo, as you can see here, we got some Python files which we will be using to convert these files, XML files to text files. Okay. So let's clone this repo on our computer. Let's do it over here. Okay, so I'll go to this XML to text folder and in this folder you can see some files. But as you can see here that there is a requirements file over here. This is requirements.txt file. We need to install these requirements. So open command prompt in this directory and run. So as you can see here that it says that requirements are already satisfied, but this is because I have already installed these requirements in my system. So these requirements are satisfied. So we can move on to transfer process. You can see that this is the XML folder. In this folder, we will copy our XML annotation files. And this is the output folder. So let's delete all files in both of these folders and copy our annotations in these folders. So let's copy all of these We have successfully copied our XML annotations in this folder, but before moving to the conversion process, we need to specify the classes names in this classes.txt file. So let's open this file. So let's copy all of our classes into these. The first one is missing whole. Let's open some file. So as you can see here, this is the name of class over here. So let's copy this missing whole class and paste it in the first row. There is a mouse byte class. Copy this name as well. 
and paste it on the second line. Now we can run this command, but before that we need to move into this directory in which we are working. So let's import os, os dot change directory to this um, XML text directory, okay? We need to change these backslashes to forward slashes. So when we are in this XML to txt directory, we can directly access all these files: this Python file, this txt file, this XML and output folder. So let's run this. So it took around two to three seconds, and it is completed. So let's see that in output folder we got our same folder as we got the XML notations. So as you can see here that we have our text file. So now we have our text. So now we have our annotations in text file which are perfectly according to the YOLO V5 format. So let's copy all these annotations. Let's delete these old XML annotations and paste our text annotations. And also we don't need this XML to TXT folder anymore. So let's delete these two. Now we are done with the annotations. So we downloaded our data set and we converted the XML annotations to our text annotations. So these exact annotations we got from Kaggle.com, but if you don't have any annotations, so do you can directly move to annotate your images manually using some tools like makesense.ai. You can watch our previous Yolo V5 video in which we have demonstrated that how to annotate your images. So now our images and annotations are ready. So we need to arrange these images and annotations according to YOLO V5 directory structure, which is like uh, this structure. So we need to have a data set, a parent folder. In that folder, we need to have two folders, one for images and one for labels. And in both folders, we need to have training and validation folders. So as you can see here. So let's create these folders over here this is a uh, data set parent folder in this folder we need to create two folders one is for images and the other is for labels So we got these directories according to YOLO V5 format. So let's move our images into these directories. But for that purpose, we need to maintain a ratio of maybe 80% uh, of images will be the training images and 20% of images will be the validation images. You can also change this ratio to maybe 70 or 30% or 65 to 35% ratio or maybe 75 to 25% ratio. We will divide it into 80 to 20 ratio. So let's, uh, so first of all, let's combine the images and text files. So let's copy all these images and move it into these annotations. So when you will open it, you will see that every image will have a separate text file with that. So now we need to move these images and annotations from this annotations folder to this data set folder. And for that purpose, I got this function. We will be using this function to move our images from this annotation folder to data set folder. So let's do that. First of all, call this function.
we need to provide it with these parameters. So first, this is the images train path, which is uh, data set images train path, this folder path, okay. But before that, we need to move in this directory from where we can access this folder. So we need to move in this parent directory, this directory, okay? So we need to change the directory, OS dot change directory to this parent directory so, can we can, so that we can access. So as you can see here that we are now in this parent directory, so we can directly access these paths from this directory so let's copy all these parts so in the second parameter we need to have images validation path which is in the data set in this folder and this validation path for number three we need to provide the labels train path this is the labels and this is the training path Change these backward slashes to forward slashes, and there is a label validation path, which is this one. And this is the data set source. This is the folder in which we have our images and annotations. So, so this is the annotations folder which we are, which is having the images and annotations. But we will not uh, do this at once. We will transfer our images one by one from all of these so that we can maintain our ratio. First of all, we will move this missing whole folder. So let's run this. It says that choice is not defined. So before this function, we need to import some packages. So let's run this function again and call this function. So in this folder, there are 92 images for training purpose and 23 images are for validation purpose. So let's see that if we go to images. So as you can see here that there are 92 images and there are 23 images. Similarly, we need to move all of these folders. So this is the second mouse white folder. So we just need to change this folder now. Let's run this function. So we moved all of our images from here to this dataset folder in 80 to 20 percent ratio. So in training folder we got 552 five, images. In and validation folder we got 138 images. So now our, this dataset folder is ready. So we don't need this annotation folder anymore. Let's delete this. So now we have only two folders. One is dataset, which is completely according to Yolo V5 format. We got our annotations converted from XML to text files, and we got our test files as well, which are 10, 12 images. Now we can open our Google Collab notebook to perform training. So let's create Let's create a new notebook over here.
now upload our data set to our Google Drive so that we can access it directly from here. So we need to create a zip file of this data set folder. Let's, let's rename it to data set PCB so that we can identify it easily. And now we can create a zip file. So when our zip file is ready, we can directly upload our data set to the Google Drive. So as you can see here that our data set is uploaded. Now we can perform training. So first of all, we need to connect our notebook to the server using GPU. So in this edit menu, you need to open this notebook settings. And over here, you need to select GPU and click on save. Now to click on connect. So first of all, we need to integrate our Google Drive with this notebook because we have uploaded our data set on the Google Drive. Write these two lines of code and so you can see that our drive is mounted over here. So we can access our data set from this. Now we need to extract this zip folder in our Google Drive. So let's copy the path of this data set. Run this command unzip. Paste the path for your data set over here. Now you need to write hyphen D. And after that, you need to write the path of your location where you want to extract your data set. So I will just extract it in this content directory. So as you can see that we got a new folder PCB dataset and in this folder we got our dataset available. Now we need to clone the GitHub repo of YOLO v5. So visit YOLO v5 directly which is this one. You need to make sure that you are in this parent directory. For that purpose uh, I will write this os.get wd function so it says that we are in the parent directory which is the content folder so we can clone over here as you can see here that we got our yolo v5 directory so move into this directory using this cd yolo v5 command we are now in this YOLO v5 directory. In this directory, you will see that there is a requirements .txt file. You need to install these requirements using pip command. So our requirements are successfully installed. Now we need to specify the location of our dataset. And for that purpose, we need a dataset .yaml file. As you can see here that I have already created a dataset.yaml file, but this is for another project, so we need to edit this for this dataset. So we need to specify the location of our dataset. So we will put this dataset.yaml file in this YOLO v5 directory. So from this directory, we need to come out of this YOLO v5 folder and go into this dataset PCB folder. So dataset PCB and forward slash, you will see that we successfully specified the path of training images and similarly we will specify the path of validation images. These two variables are required and here you need to specify the names of all of your classes but Remember that you need to specify the names according to, to the index of your annotations. So missing whole annotation was on the first index, mouse byte was on the second index. So we have six classes over here. So we need to write this parameter as six. This parameter NC specifies the number of classes we have. 
So our dataset.yaml file is ready. Now we need to upload this dataset.yaml file to YOLO v5 directory on the Google Colab. So just drag this file and drop it in this directory. So here you got this file. Now we can successfully run the training. So this is the training command. We need to specify the train.py file. This is the image parameter in which we will specify the size of image. This is the batch size, which is 16. And this is the number of epochs. Epochs are the number of iterations, like how many times your YOLO v5 model will look into your data set. So let's specify this maybe uh, 50. Uh, this is the data set of YAML file, which is this file, which we have just uploaded. And in weights parameter, we need to specify some pre-trained weights. You can also see other models in the training section. These, you can use any model. 5X is the largest YOLO v5 model, and 5N is the smallest model. So you can specify any model over here. So we are currently using YOLO v5S. And uh, there's one more parameter, which is name. You can specify the name of your current experiment. This is totally optional. So for, I will specify my project PCB first, OK? So now we'll just uh, run this training command. As you can see here, that our training is completed and results are saved to runs, train, and PCB first order. So let's check out that. So here, as you can see, that our training results are saved. So let's see the confusion matrix. Uh, results are not that much satisfactory, but uh, we got our results. Maybe it is because of number of epochs. We need to uh, run this command for at least maybe 300 epochs. So these results are for only 50 epochs, so uh, which are not that good. Let's see the PR curve. So as you can see here that it uh, is also not as good as expected. The overall accuracy of all classes is 57%, which is not good, but increasing number of epochs may improve our results. So you can try that. So let's try some validation and prediction. So this is the data set we provided. So let's see the one which is predicted. So as you can see that a lot of detections are missing in this image in this image and uh, in this image there is no uh, detection. So results are not that good in these number of epochs. Uh, you need to run this for at least maybe 300 epochs. So now as you can see that I have trained my model once again by increasing the number of epochs up to 300. So let's see the results once again. Our training is completed and results are saved in this directory. So let's see that. So as you can see that we got pretty good results by increasing the number of epochs. So let's see the PR curve. If you see the PR curve, it is also pretty good. We got a 93% of accuracy for all classes. Now let's see uh, the validation results. So this confusion matrix is for the validation.